So guys, and welcome back again to another amazing episode. This is the Diaspora Transition episode. Today, I have here with me someone very special. I've been trying to get hold of her for a long period of time, but she's hard to get. Finally, I have here with me Megan. Now, she is, you know, a magician when it comes to the hair and how to grow your hair, what to eat and everything. I have a lot of questions for her, you know, based on the healthy part of the whole, you know, her hair thing. And also why even she decided to move to Africa, Ghana, from America. Like, honestly, I want to go to America, but she moved. <laughs> so I, I had a lot of questions for her. So now that I have her uh, with me, I'm going to ask her. So without a further ado, let's just get right into it. So... Megan, welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, for those of you watching you for the first time, who doesn't know who you are or anything about you, can you please tell us who you are? Introduce yourself from how you grew up, where you grew up, the school you went to, and basically things like that. Okay, so I'm Megan Green, and what I like to tell people is I've been obsessed with hair and all things about beauty since I was very young. I was the girl who literally would like be figuring out putting mayo, eggs on the ha my hair. I've also, I've been getting paid to do hair since I was 13. So, um, I've always knew that I love how hair was somewhat of an escape. I think growing up in Philadelphia, it's not the safest place at all, at all, at all. Wow. <laughs> and um, I think sometimes that was kind of challenging for me. So I love that. I've always thrown myself in hair and education. So although most of my career is in the aerospace industry, I've always had clients. Even in high school, I was cutting my friend's bangs in the bathroom. In uh, college, I think I did a whole sorority line sisters. Like I did everybody's hair at one point. And um, I've always loved it, even though um, I've been in the corporate and creative world. Over the last few years, I've decided to marry both sides into one via the Crown Workshop. Uh, when I lived in LA, I had an avocado-based product business. And the reason I started making it was because I couldn't find anything that actually would work on my hair. You know what I mean? Even the most expensive products, I feel like it wasn't as effective as the products that God gave us in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so it made me want to take it serious. Uh, in grad school, I started to um, transition from making the product to hosting more experiences. Um, my background in the aerospace, most people don't know this, mm -hmm. but my background in the aerospace industry is I did a lot of diversity and inclusion work, training and development. So I've always enjoyed figuring out how to bring about the best in a person, mm -hmm. you know? And wow. when you're doing someone's hair, it's kind of transactional. You come wow. in, I do your hair, you're le you leave. Mm -hmm. However, if you're doing someone's hair and you take out the extension and you realize how they like cringe at themselves in the mirror, it wow. just didn't sit right with me i would wow. have women from mm -hmm. the ages of like you know high school mm -hmm. to over 40 who didn't feel comfortable with wow. their natural hair so that made me want to start the crown workshop wow imagine wow. 30 40 wow. you yeah. still don't love what and god I, gave I you i think i think what you're doing is great in a way that wig has became like has become something that each and every you know young african girl wants to like get that before they they would feel like i'm really beautiful and the last time I visited your crown workshop, I was yeah. there, I filmed it. And hearing you really speak on, on the hair and how it affects your mental you know, health yeah. and everything, I think it's really deep. So later on, I would like you to share more on that and you know, you know, educate the viewers. And even if someone wants to you know, come and get help or you know, you know, I don't know how you call that, but then come to you, help her out. Yeah. And how to, you know, go yeah, that. I do natural hair coaching. So people book appointments in my mm -hmm. calendar and my goal is it's not about you just learning mm -hmm. how to take care of your hair. Sometimes you have to re-examine your relationship with your hair and that ultimately help, ultimately helps you re-examine your mm -hmm. relationship with yourself. You nice. know what I mean? Nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> so now I have a question for you that I've been keeping for so long. Why did you leave the <laughs> land of opportunity <laughs> for Ghana? Okay, so what made me... Okay, so first, mm -hmm. I was in LA mm -hmm. in grad school. I studied uh, communication management. So I decided that I had this avocado-based product business, and I was like, 
Okay, girl, if you're serious about your business, you need to understand what investors look for. Right. And a lot of my clients w had some proximity to South Africa. Mm -hmm. One person did a documentary, and I had a dream. I was in South Africa, and two weeks later, I um, found out about this internship. So mm. I did an internship in South Africa, and I remember being in Joburg, and a lot of the little girls, at this time, my fro was like huge. So. Wow. All the little girls were like, please don't leave us, help us with our hair. And personally, you know, people want to make it seem like apartheid was a long time ago. But to be quite honest, if you go to South Africa, you realize that the mental imprisonment is still very active in South Africa. And I realize how a lot of black women would shrink in the presence of whiteness. And sometimes, like, you see a little girl combing a mm -hmm. white person's hair. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's cute. Right. Only because... A lot of times they are thinking that this is more beautiful than what they have in their hair because right. for so long we haven't had the tools around mm -hmm. how to manage our hair, we haven't had the right products, and more importantly, we need to do a lot of conditioning. So wow. it was difficult, you know, I had a love-hate relationship with South Africa, so I go back to LA, I rebrand my business, and I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this? I've dreamed of this um, hair experience or program that helped women feel more confident mm -hmm. in themselves and sometimes this is why I want you to know sometimes you have ideas it's like these whispers and when you don't listen to them sometimes they get louder and louder yeah. and sometimes it takes a lot of confidence to go after what you've never seen number one and something you really really want to do and number two you don't know what's going to happen exactly so i was in cape town 2018 mm -hmm. i came back and i launched the crown workshop in 2019 wow. and it was just after i started doing these experiences in middle schools throughout the u.s so in brooklyn la and to be quite honest i feel like in la you're always reminded of what you don't have Exactly. And it's very like challenging to mm -hmm. feel satisfied in LA because you always you're always gonna see calabasas. Yeah. You're always gonna see something that feels. I heard it's very fake out there. That's not true. I mean, <laughs> no, no. I mean, you have to understand everywhere you go. I mm -hmm. mean, some people have good experiences right. in Ghana. Some people don't. So I right. think it's all about your circle. Mm -hmm. And personally, I was so nervous about going to LA because I lived in Portland and I thought the same thing. But depending on what you're doing, I think mm -hmm. doing yoga and getting into that community, you mm -hmm. start to attract different types right. of people. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy I attracted um, authentic people in LA, but I feel like my vibe is gonna repel what isn't for me anyway. Wow, so yeah. so, according so to that would make mm -hmm. me want to come because I yeah. feel like the little girls were like, please help me with mm -hmm. my hair. And I felt like right. when you can do something and you have the mm -hmm. knowledge, mm -hmm. I think you should go for it right. and i felt like i needed to Two. wow that's that's touching for me honestly like you sacrificing because it's paradise out there and then you in la is a great life i'm not gonna lie right. my business was going well right. but i i'm very focused on impact you right. know what i mean like right. I've been given a lot throughout my life, so I already know that I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make sure I'm living a yeah. life of service, mm -hmm. and it's been something I've yeah, been no, really mm -hmm. focused on for a very long time, wow. <laughs> so it's been consistent. So wow. my family, even though they're like, oh my God, this mm -hmm. girl just moved to South Africa during a pandemic, because I literally, when I launched my business in 2019, I said, I want to wake up here. I want to wow. see Table Mountain every day. I yeah. want to run. I want to do all of this. It is beautiful in South Africa, honestly. No, it's amazing. <laughs> so I literally went home, visited my family in mm -hmm. Philadelphia, went to LA, mm -hmm. donated everything I owned, and moved to South really? Africa. Within f yeah, I don't think I told you this. I moved within 48 hours before the borders closed because wow. I'm the type of person, I don't want to look back on my life and be like, oh my God, what if I did this? So I kind of felt like, I'm not going to be okay if I don't do this. And wow. although it's challenging, although it's scary, although I don't know, I don't know what wow. is about to happen. I feel like you really have to have unshakable faith. And I think if you have a good heart and you're really willing to come to a place with love and mm -hmm. not coming into a place mm -hmm. like I'm going to teach you or I'm above you. I feel like when you have that humility and you trust that your, um, your steps are ordered, um, 
Yeah, that's what made me do it. But mm -hmm. guys, I was feeling crazy. <laughs> Sometimes I'm still feeling crazy. Yeah, because I, I'm imagining what your family would be saying. Harsh words, so you're stupid, you're crazy, even your friends. I don't know how harsh they would be on you because honestly, I want to go to LA. It's like the dreamland. <laughs> and you left there, you went to South Africa. Yeah. That's your first country in Africa you ever visited, is that yeah. correct? And then from South Africa, you chose Ghana. Yeah. So I visited, uh, when I was in South Africa, I visited Kenya for mm. a month. Oh. Yeah, so okay. I visited Kenya for a month. I met a few girls, like I was connected from a friend. And I met a few girls who were in the natural hair space. Wow. And then um, I visited Ghana for my 30th birthday. Okay, okay guys, so now you know I'm aging <laughs> like fine wine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't um, believe you at Terry actually, but I just continue. <laughs> yeah, so um, I visited Ghana and I told myself I want to do my workshops all around the continent because I think that there's many countries, not just South Africa. Mm -hmm. South Africa was kind of like, it's where I'm most comfortable because I think our history is parallel with mm -hmm. the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I interned there for such a long time that I built a lot of connections. Right. So coming to Ghana was very scary. Yes, I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know what was going to happen. But did I was, you know anyone here in Ghana before moving? Um, yeah, I was dating someone. Oh, from Ghana. Yeah. I told you Ghanaian men are winning. You guys keep telling me. <laughs> we get I'm to the relationship some tea to this. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Sipping tea for what? Um, Ghanaian men are winning everywhere. Okay. The most faithful men in the whole of Africa. That is the biggest lie. <laughs> That is the biggest lie on earth. Girlfriend, don't come over here and get your heart broken, okay? No, don't do that to Ghana, man. <laughs> Please. So, um, you've been here in Ghana for how long now? I've been here for, so the first time I was here, I was here mm -hmm. for a month. Then I went to Abidjan for two weeks, but then my aunt passed away. So mm. that actually made me go back to the U.S. But oh, wow. during the time I was there, I got an offer for a contract role for an NGO that wanted to bring their mission to Ghana. Wow. And although, honestly, I was very scared to come to Ghana, I think I had like a panic attack on the flight, to be honest. Wow. Um, just because I didn't really know what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It was out of my comfort zone. It wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. People, let's have this conversation. Ghana okay. really isn't my favorite place, Oh, to be no, honest. really? No. Explain, elaborate on that. Um, I think it takes a lot to mm -hmm. get adjusted to because mm -hmm. The way people think is very different mm -hmm. and there's lots of like systems that I feel mm -hmm. are very like abrasive and inefficient. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're used to things that are Point a little out more... Point two of the systems that is inefficient um, and how you think we can improve upon those kind of um, things, you know, putting you back in terms of trying to succeed or progress in Ghana. Yeah, I think the biggest <coughs> thing is like, number one, when you go to a place you want to have community um, because if you are putting yourself in the opportunity to meet people, as soon as they hear your accent, they're going to want to up the price exactly. three thousand percent. Wow! Know? And sometimes feeling like people are extractive is really hurtful. Yeah. You know, even mm -hmm. believe it or not, you could. You could think that you're friends with someone, but mm -hmm. they just want you to spend money with their business. Yes. And that's okay. Yeah. But I think you just have to set your expectations. Mm -hmm. I think Ghana online feels like a dreamland. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is PR, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of shifting through mm -hmm. the weeds mm -hmm. and like understanding who you won't mm -hmm. click with that mm -hmm. you have to go through. Mm -hmm. I think another thing is, um, this is simple, but mm -hmm. it's something that really stresses mm -hmm. me out because I came to Ghana working mm -hmm. for a company that's based in the U.S. that's mm -hmm. very strict on different deadlines. And if I'm calling someone and I'm asking them to call me or meet me or send me something, there's no sense of urgency. Right. And they don't care. And I get the, it. The Ghana However, kind of thing. trying to operate in a Western company mm -hmm. in Ghana where Pete, the timeline is very fluid, right. it caused me a lot of... Um, anxiety wow. honestly yeah you wouldn't be the first person to but say sometimes, this but sometimes <laughs> you know i've learned that like for example you could be meeting someone right and depending on where they're coming from mm -hmm. the traffic all the things that could happen the network the why like 
Mm -hmm. there's so many variables that can influence how people will Mm -hmm. show up and while you may be affected you kind of have to learn not to take it as Mm -hmm. personal Mm -hmm. you know but yeah Ghana (laughs) it's been I I tell people Ghana has me in a culinary mm-hmm. and enjoyment chokehold. <laughs> wow. So yeah. so that brings me to you had some expectations before coming to Ghana. And did it I meet thought that ex- I was coming home to the motherland. Right. I thought it was going to be like, yeah, I'm with my people now. I'm home. Like when I was a kid, I used to be like, nah, I'm home. So when people would be like, why are you coming home? I'm like, I am home. Right. And I thought that, I think people told me that Ghanaians were very like, Generous, hospitable, hospitable mm. very warm, mm. and I didn't feel the warmness until right. I actually went to the north. I feel like Accra is not that warm of a place right. because everybody's in like survival mode yeah. and trying to Accra make it. Accra is just like an extension of the west. So if you use Accra to judge who true Ghanaians are, no, you might you, get it twisted. No, exactly. So my experiences are Accra, mm-hmm. and I particularly don't really. Um, mm-hmm. It's not my favorite place. I know that you have to get outside of Accra to mm-hmm. really see the real Ghana and to have um, a better experience. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, so what has been like the major challenge? One major challenge you've faced so far since you moved? Um, I think trust. Trust. Hmm, yeah. That's a big word. Yeah, because you never know. Like You kind of think that people will have the best intentions for For you you. or be very genuine and you just don't know what's their um, prerogative Mm -hmm. and to be quite honest like it's in all relationships like there's a certain level of I need to make sure I have my own back like people are like someone yesterday was like oh well Ghana's safe Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. peace yeah it's safe but it's not safe for me emotionally oh yeah (laughs) like it's not safe for me emotionally (laughs) at all and I think that's more important than anything (laughs) okay let's end on a positive note what can you say is like the three most you know oh I have so much good to say about Ghana three most positive uh, just because you see the challenges of a place I don't think I could be here for seven months mm -hmm. without seeing the good so Mm -hmm. number one I would say the creatives in Ghana are really incredible because we have so many challenges before you and the fact that they're able to understand how Ghana works, navigate it, and still do incredible things despite a system that doesn't always favor you Mm -hmm. and a system that makes things really challenges. I love the um, creative scene in Ghana. It's very very inspiring, um, definitely. Mm -hmm. Another thing I really love, I think if I left Ghana, what would I do with, with like, what would I do, what am I going to do when I don't have garden next to and yeah. What yeah. am I going to do when I don't have Banku in Tilapia? Right. Or Banku in Okra Stew. I just got, like, okay, What's look, look, I've been Ghanaian practicing. Food when you finish? I just, you see the cut <laughs> and the to cut it for Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's me. I know how to do the fufu now, so I'm feeling different. I think when mm-hmm. you start to get in the fufu life of Ghana, mm-hmm. you feel... But is that your favorite uh, Ghanaian food so far? No. So my favorite is okra stew and uh, banku. Wow, me too. Definitely. And many other foreigners that I've spoken to so far. Why though? What is it? Because it's overrated, it's incredible. honestly. No, it's not. It's incredible. It's incredible. You can all agree to disagree. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I like love it too. I love I it too. But I, I think it's overrated. The way you guys say it. Ah. Uh, fufu, I think fufu is great with light soup and then beef. Not fufu. I didn't say fufu. I said banku. I know, and but I think fufu soup. is better than banku. Ah, uh, I don't think so. You don't think so. <laughs> like, we no. would agree to disagree. Now let's move on. Okay, yeah, it, that yeah. was the last. The last thing you love about Ghana, you said too. Yeah. So the last thing I love about Ghana <laughs> is, you meet the world here. I think a lot of you know Ghana did a call out to the world to come home. Year of return. Yeah. So whether I think a lot of it was PR or mm. a lot of it <laughs> was like genuinely right. wanting to welcome people yeah. in. Mm-hmm. I think that it's brought a lot of people, businesses, creatives, that you could walk into a space in Ghana and run into so many different cool people. And I think that once you build your community here Mm -hmm. and you kind of, like for example, being here for seven months, I think people are like, okay. Like, because people are always coming in and out of Ghana. I think you get a little more respect when you stayed longer. Longer, And um, yeah, I 
But I mean, if without the year of return, I wouldn't have met you. And it now creates opportunities for, you know, collaboration. So I think there's no, good it was to it. No, it's, good it's, good to it's it more then, good than right, anything. Right. It's only so good. Do you even see yourself settling in Ghana? For real, for real, for real. Getting my friend, Marion, or whatever. Settling, like, for real, for real. Be honest with me, like, I, I don't think it's possible. Mm, how? Explain. <laughs> How sweet. <laughs> I don't think it's possible for me right now because mm. I really miss my family. So mm. I would never be here 100% of the right. time. Mm -hmm. But I would, I do feel like I'm going to have a lifelong relationship with Ghana, okay. regardless of the challenges that mm -hmm. happens when you first move here. Right. I think that Ghana has a way of um, forcing you to grow mm -hmm. in ways that mm -hmm. in hindsight you appreciate. Right. So will yeah. you ever even advise someone to move to Ghana? If you, you're not going to do it, if someone comes to you right now, Megan, you've been there, how is the country like? I want to establish this kind of business here. What are you going to tell, tell that person? Is it a yes, go, try, make your diligence, try it, or it's a no for you? Be honest. I think I would just tell people that you have to have mm -hmm. an incredible amount of patience mm -hmm. to do business in Ghana right. and take it in doses at first to really get accustomed and then decide. I'm the type of person I jump in. I jump mm -hmm. in fully. I moved here and I didn't know what to expect. Wow. But I don't think that's best for everyone. So I'm like... 35% no and 65% <laughs> you should try it because there's so much opportunity right. here and it is a country of people who build things and I think that's really exciting wow. and I do love that I get to go into places mm -hmm. and I see people building their homes and building their exactly. businesses and yeah, it's worth it. I mean, yeah. myself, I don't know. Maybe yeah. let's connect back and see. Because okay. I keep saying I'm leaving it every month. I push it back for right. another event. <laughs> so, like, what would you say you wish you knew before coming to Ghana, though? Um, I wish I knew that... Um, I wish I understood more of the culture around, like, how... Hmm. <laughs> I really look like I'm really trying to choose my words Just carefully. Just figure it out, man. Just say it. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. So I honestly, let's say it as it is. Yeah. I wish I understood the culture around, um, like, dating. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I understood like the way, mm -hmm. like the way, um, the responsibility that mm -hmm. Ghanaian men mm -hmm. feel that they have to you, okay. and the way girls like what they accept okay. because. Okay. You should understand that. And like for me, love is not really, um, I was talking to a friend about this <laughs> and I feel like love is not really transactional. Like you provide right. for me and then, okay, cool, we do okay. this. You know, okay. I think that it should be a little different. You know, okay. and I think a lot of women are groomed here to be wives, but not to be exactly. bold in the world and mm -hmm. to have standards mm -hmm. and coming here and seeing like how sometimes women can look at you as competition when right. you really just want to be their friend let's, it's let's like talk more on that yeah let's talk more on that because growing up um the females in ghana here are groomed to be um a wife right and then be dependent on the husband for everything yeah and you being an american that's totally opposite because you uh, more groomed in America to be self-sufficient, independent, and not to even rely on anybody for anything. Yeah. Right now, you coming down here, what do you think is the, what, what do you think you are lacking behind and what can you do to change that? And when you finish that, we can talk about the relationship right, with a boyfriend thing. So just to elaborate on that a little bit. Um, I don't think that there's anything I can do to change it. Really? <laughs> No, I mean like no, because I think that some things have been generation after generation. Okay. However, I would say that um, what I would like to change is helping women to see that mm -hmm. it doesn't. It actually benefits you to right. go and talk to another woman because it expands your network, and you never really know what connections can bring to you. I think mm -hmm. sometimes um, people told me that like. Ghanaians are friendly, but it doesn't mean that they're your friend. Right. And I feel okay. like if you could kind of lower the wall a bit 
especially for the foreigners come in here. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes, like for example, if you are in a relationship that didn't work out, you might bring some of that yeah. baggage to yeah. your next relationship right. and you shouldn't. I think that if you've had people fail you or try to get over on you or try to like backstab you and you go into new friendships mm -hmm. or relationships with women in that way, mm -hmm. It really is a blockage to mm -hmm. something that could benefit everyone. Okay. You know? But do you think the, the women here in Ghana are united? Mm, I don't think say so. Say that honestly. Because no, then we I can would say, I mean, I'll give you an example right. of something that was like mind blowing for me. Like I was um, out in like a club with a friend okay. and, you know, it wasn't even really Which that. Which club? Shout out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was at Crooner. Okay. Crooner, yeah, and it was Crooner. And it was. Just random throughout the week, I was meeting a friend. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we meet. People don't know if we're together or not, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like, every time I would go to the bathroom, there would be a line of women waiting to talk to him, like oh. going out of their way. And that was that would never happen in the U.S. because wow. number one, it's kind of a respect that like, okay. if you're out with someone, someone yeah, yeah. But for Ghana, it's like, oh my God, this man is. He has his things together, They're he's married, or like, he must be stable, so let me get a piece yeah. of him. Yeah. And that is not a safe place for right. sisterhood. Yeah, and then um, I interviewed someone from America who said the same thing, that um, in Ghana here, when you have a car and then you have a house, you, 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 are, you have everything, and then every girl will be throwing uh, herself at you. Is that a case in, in, in that um, situation? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think that's what um, I think that's what happens, and I think that a lot of women are reserved here. And I realize it's a lot of classism. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, if you feel like I'm here, you wouldn't be open. Whereas in the U.S., you have friends from all walks of life. Right. Right. And you don't think of someone Anything not like being on your level yeah. because you have this innate feeling of worthiness regardless hmm. of your money. Wow. Wow. And I don't feel that way here. I feel like wow. it's like, oh, I can't talk to you because mm -hmm. you're here. And it's very... It's bad. It's not bad. It's just an interesting place. I to. think it's bad, honestly, <laughs> because then um, you can't even make true friends because people friend you because of your status. Yeah. And it, it sucks sometimes. Let's dive into the relationship part. Ghanaian men are rated the most faithful Why men in the whole of West Africa. Me this message. It is not true. <laughs> okay, you, you dated a Ghanaian. No. <laughs> Look, right. someone is over there shaking his head like, he was no. like what? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I, I, lo I like to, you know, vouch for my Ghanaian man, you know. You've dated a Ghanaian man, right? You've had a several experience with Ghanaian men. What do you think of the, you know, rate, let's just rate them on a scale of one to ten compared to your, your best, you know, uh, dating experience, wherever, in America or whatever. Because it looks like an Ghanaian are losing. But I want your perspective. I think they're a good six. Six? That is good. Okay, honestly. five. That is, oh, no. <laughs> it's like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Honestly, I'm not really the type of person that right. feels like just because you've met one person mm -hmm. that, you know, could have not worked right. out with. I don't feel that way. I think that... I'm sure there are gems, they, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that look, Ghana is a poly place, and people make it seem like hmm. it's not. I don't know anyone. Let's, that, let's a guy around. told me that I don't know any man yeah. that's married that doesn't have something like a girlfriend. And sometimes a lot of women understand. Like yes. a, a one woman said, mm -hmm. you just have to be patient and re like pick your battles. And I'm not the type of person where like. I don't know. I mean, I want to live. Like, I want to live life. the soft life. Right. I don't want to have to stress. And I think some wives they get comfortable yeah. that your husband they might leave, but it. your rent is paid and all these mm. things. So you feel like it's, cool. it's not worth it. So yeah. I think it depends on the country, and it seems like women are okay with it here. So yeah, someone said um, I'm not in Ghana here. Men feel like it's normal to cheat. I don't know what you, your take on that. It's normal. It's, it's normal. It's, it's what I think because of like the, you the don't culture. Have you can problems. get married to like five, <laughs> six. Honestly, like, you know. <laughs> I think that yeah. the men here right. feel like it is their duty to not just have one. Yeah. 
it's in the blood. Yeah. Uh, um, don't come get me. I'm just joking, okay? Let's prove her wrong. You, her social media will be in the description. If you think you're the perfect person <laughs> to really prove, you know, to her me. wrong and, you know, raise the shine of the Ghanaian men, slide in that DM. And yeah. <laughs> no, I would say that it seems that it's right. very normal here. Mm -hmm. And if you come with a world view that things should be different, mm -hmm. you're going to clash. So I just think that mm -hmm. everything is about communication, right. you know? So if mm -hmm. you know that you're not a one man right. person, I respect the men who say, mm -hmm. this is who I am. Is this something you can work with? Wow. And believe it or not, if you are fully confident in yourself and mm -hmm. you don't want to hurt someone, mm -hmm. you would have that conversation because okay. there's many girl women who would probably be okay with okay that. Okay with that, yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who is trying to follow her heart? Okay. Because you did, and then that brought you to Ghana according to the conversation. So yeah. what advice would you give to that, that person who is trying to move from UK, US, to Ghana because of love? What advice would you give to that person? I didn't move because of love. Just let's say someone who wants to do that. Move because of love. Right, because people come down here because they met someone in the diaspora who is a Ghanaian man and now we don't oh. want to follow them. But you've been here, you've seen how the men are. What advice will you give to someone who wants to make that decision? I would say to make sure you build your network and make sure that you come with some sort of detachment because mm -hmm. obviously when you meet someone and you love them you want it to last for mm -hmm. make it last forever you know okay. um but i think that you should understand that you have to detach yourself from the person and really see if you can operate in that space with or without them because it was really difficult for me to mm -hmm. feel like I was starting over in wow. Ghana. And it's okay, mm -hmm. but I will say that like, it's really like you should be able to sustain yourself because I don't even think the culture of mm -hmm. like, okay, we're dating, <laughs> let's just move together and figure things out. Right. I think that it's kind of healthy to have different mm -hmm. like living situations. Mm -hmm and to be able to sustain yourself and see if it mm -hmm. aligns and then go down that direction. Nice. But guys, I'm no relationship. I'm as single as a dollar bill, so I don't know. She <laughs> is single right now. She's on the market. I'm in love with Jesus. Her social media handles on the screen. I am in love with you Jesus. know what to do. <laughs> my man is above. My man is Jesus above. is married, I'm okay? Please stop to that. Myself and helping other people connect to themselves through their hair. So let's talk about Crown Workshop. Yeah. And um, <laughs> what you've been doing for the women here in Ghana so far. Yeah. Um, as I said earlier on, I came to your workshop that you, you did, I think, about two months ago. Yeah. Tell us about it and then how um, it all started here in Ghana. You talked about LA and everything, but just brief on that and get into it, into details. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah so I started to do the workshops in um, South Africa. So what brought me to Ghana is that I really want to go to different countries and have these experiences. Right. So I wanted to come to Ghana and do the workshops at different schools. Mm -hmm. And what I've started to do was to host different experiences like the last workshop the one right. he went to was how to eat for your hair and skin goals i feel like everyone wants to have the most perfect skin right. and a lot of people look at my hair when it's out and yes it's really big but it's not always about the product what you eat really influences what grows out so i'm very intentional about i say eating for my crown and um yeah so that yeah. that's one experience i did here mm -hmm. About two weeks ago, I had an event called um, Hair Politics and Reflections of African Beauty. And I like to call it a vibey educational experience mm -hmm. where you can come and see like a hair art installation. Wow. You have people doing like mm -hmm. the most intricate I saw, styles. I saw that. It, was it in Kumasi? No, it was actually here, but oh, I okay. did a, um, I went to Kamasi for Fashion Week with okay. you. Okay, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, so the last event was cool because it was for men and women. Mm -hmm. Like, we had um, demonstrations mm -hmm. on how to take care of your beard, how to oh. make sure you're not going bald early. I wanted to ask, I was like, did you just <laughs> put men aside? <laughs> yeah, no, I like doing experiences that are um, inclusive at times, but right. there are spaces that are curated for women because right. when you want to re-examine your relationship with your hair, mm -hmm. you have to start thinking about what are you telling yourself about beauty? Mm -hmm. What are you telling yourself that doesn't serve you? And mm -hmm. a lot of times it 
it's a little uncomfortable that mm -hmm. you may not want a man present, but mm -hmm. you want that sisterhood. Right. So, okay, yeah. I understand that. One so, no, please. one thing I've done recently in Ghana, which has been my favorite, mm -hmm. um, since I've been in Ghana, mm -hmm. I've been boxing at Jamestown. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I saw I've, that. Yeah, I've been boxing at Jamestown. I really love it. My boxing name mm -hmm. is Mega Lee. Mm, yeah. Don't play with me. <laughs> um, so. As I'm boxing every day, I realize, you know, I always see men, I don't see a lot of women. And personally, like, just as my crown care journey mm -hmm. has been very important to me feeling good about myself, I think boxing has really helped me because it's helped me, like, fight through depression. And I think when you're moving and doing something that's very intense, mm -hmm. number one, it just makes you feel much better, like, right. when you're finished. And I think all women should feel strong and beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. once you can, like, when you're getting all your frustrations yeah. out and you're hitting, I feel like you just feel better. Right. And I've been boxing since I, well, when I was younger, I wanted to be a boxer. I used right. to train. Wow. But then um, I moved to L.A. I had a boxing coach. Then when I moved to Cape Town, I had a boxing mm -hmm. um, coach. And same thing Ghana. here. Yeah, so I hosted an event in Jamestown. And it, okay, it was like... Uh, maybe a month ago, two months ago, oh, yeah. and we had like 15 women who mm -hmm. were my age mm -hmm. and 50 high school girls, and we all learned the fundamentals of boxing and natural hair care, and it was a lot about like mental health, so I had the women kind of become mm -hmm. mentors to mm -hmm. the young girls, mm -hmm. so it was really beautiful Let's talk to... more mental health after. Yeah, it was really beautiful to kind of just see everyone mm -hmm. come together for the boxing event. And I'm going to have another event <coughs> coming up soon. Invite me. I'll be there okay. to share this with the viewers. This one is for guys as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I can both. even come there. Yeah. Nice. So let's talk about mental health and what you do helps, you know, the mental health situation. Okay. In um, women. Yeah, so I haven't talked this much about it, but I think it's necessary. Like, okay. Ghana has been particularly challenging for me because I deal with a lot of like mental health. Sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm happy, you know what I mean? Right. And I've realized like what I'm eating every day influences my mental health. I think things were much easier in um, South Africa because I didn't have all these additional stresses and mm -hmm. also I was very intentional about making sure I was taking my supplements. I was mm -hmm. eating like um, salmon and sweet potatoes and all these things that are actually good for your mood and mental health and when I came to Ghana I just wanted to eat a cheque <laughs> I just wanted to eat like tilapia and banku I didn't think about all the things wow. until are you trying to say uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to say that you have to be intentional about mm. not about well not only about what you're eating right but also what you're telling yourself who you're surrounding yourself with and what you're doing like i told you boxing has been really good for my mental health mm -hmm. and sometimes when i don't feel my best i go to boxing just mm -hmm. because i want to feel a little better wow. and i don't know i don't think enough people talk about like anxiety mm -hmm. or like dealing with depression i think for me it's not really easy to right. It's not right. at all. I'm by right. myself. I don't know people. Sometimes I'm a little paranoid depending right. on different experiences. So mm -hmm. I have to be very intentional because I could think about my family and just get sad because wow. I'm like, oh, like, I haven't seen my family for a while. Oh, mm -hmm. my niece probably feels like I don't love her enough. Yeah. Oh, look, look. And then yeah. it becomes like Too a much. slippery slope. Mm -hmm. So I would say that when I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not doing anything physical and I'm barely doing my hair like that my hair doesn't I could just wear a fro mm -hmm. but I'm not like when I'm conditioning my hair like when I'm going through it like I'm putting a lot of intention around like it's like time for yourself you know and right. when I'm not taking that time for myself it leads to me feeling sad sometimes you know moving is cool mm -hmm. when like you see the highlights on Instagram right. but you don't understand that you're in a place you know nothing yeah. about. You don't know the language. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly learning. And sometimes it would get to a point where I would come out and I just would get so much anxiety that I would just have to go home. Oh, you know? no, really? Yeah, like I would cry. And I'm like, okay, girl, we're not crying in public <laughs> today. Get not your today. ass home. <laughs> yeah, and I wow. think when you move to a new place, sometimes you don't, like for me, I don't like to feel like a burden on people. So. Right. 
even if I'm going through something, I might not necessarily call them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so a lot of things I'm handling by myself. So mm -hmm. I think that it's really important for you to have a tribe and community of exactly. people. And you, you are doing trust. that. You are doing that because <laughs> at your crown workshop, I, I was there. I was privileged to be invited there. And I saw how everyone was really vulnerable to each other and opened up, right? About their insecurities and what they can you advise them on what they can even eat or do to really kind of boost their confidence in all yeah. anger and help their mental health. And I think you've created that community. There was a lot of women, as you can see on the screen, who came. So I think yeah. you are doing that, and I I must congratulate you on that. As well. Thank you. No, I really like that's my favorite part, and I think that when you're doing work that's purposeful, your work actually serves you. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when I'm doing the crown workshop, if I haven't done it in a long time, I don't really feel that good because I think the crown workshop is something I needed as a kid. Right. And it's something that I continuously need, like the space of non-judgment, um, the space of growing and getting women together to talk about things we don't normally do and to help women meet different people. I think one of the best things I've loved about being in Ghana is the women who have kind of been like, okay, girl, mm -hmm. like, what do you need? Right. Um, and they are uh, they are the people who show up for my workshops. Like, wow. I'm very impact driven. So, like, wow. sometimes I think we live in a world where people are like, oh, are you dress nice. I want to be your friend. But I'm like, sis, <laughs> what do you want to do for the world? Are you right. going to show up and mm -hmm. help these girls? Because mm -hmm. if you're not, I'm mm -hmm. not showing up for you. Right. You know what I right. mean? I love that. Yeah, I just sometimes, like, making friends you have to be very intentional about mm -hmm. like who you're putting right. in your circle because mm -hmm. like for example a lot of people i'm very talented mm -hmm. at hair you mm -hmm. know what i mean and some people if i love you mm -hmm. i get a lot of benefit from making people feel beautiful mm -hmm. but if we're not aligned with mm -hmm. like values <coughs> i'm not going to put as much time energy and effort right. into right. your right what so you have you're trying to on. say you need people who have the same mindset to come together with you to help you know yeah i want people who are not thinking about just how much money they're gonna make, make? i okay. want people who are thinking about like what type of contribution do you want to have on the world you right. know because it doesn't take much to influence the life of someone else so sometimes like i think if you're a beautiful woman you, when you go out, you get a lot of attention. You right. meet a lot of people who want to be friends with you just mm -hmm. because of how Beautiful you look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like if I need you to show up for something that's important to me and you don't, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that is very unhealthy. Don't don't choose friends like that. So, but I'm girls do that. It's like, oh my god, I like your shoes. I like your shoes. Yeah. Let's be cool. That's a late thing, you know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if it's, you've, you've seen that in Ghana, honestly. It's, I mean, yes, it's been in horror, Ghana, horror. but you have to understand that, like, the West has dominated the world so much so that much these true. these countries and these cities that aren't mm -hmm. the West try to act like it, and it's not even in their blood. It doesn't Someone make sense. Someone said Ghanaians are obsessed trying to be like the whites. What do you think? Definitely. About I think that what, you know, I wrote this on Twitter the other day. I'm really tired of being in spaces where, mm -hmm. like, whiteness is prioritized mm. and actually like glorified in the right. way that you can't understand what's here like what you have mm -hmm. that's the same way i'll give you an example mm -hmm. how can a product like cantu that's okay mm -hmm. not that great but because it's from the u.s you guys are willing to pay double for it when right. there's so many local brands that are using mm -hmm. the best ingredients that come from here that right. people in the west are paying so much money for right. but you want to prioritize what's outside even in south africa like i used to get freaked out because people mm -hmm. would be like oh my god like people are like they want to have proximity to an american like you right. want to be friends but yes. i think that's really strange mm. i think it goes deep and it's hate it's self-hate so, because yes. you, like one time was like i'm so happy so one guy was like oh like i'm happy like that i that i've met someone like you and i'm like no i'm mm -hmm. happy i'm in africa and that exactly. i've met someone like you and yeah. i feel like this obsession with the west and whiteness really needs to be dismantled yes. and one thing yeah. i want to talk about is like the fact that white girls here can go to school mm -hmm. and not have to cut their hair, but, but then, black girls exactly. have to cut their hair when Let's they're so that. young. Yeah, like your hair is so much a part of your 
identity. So mm -hmm. for you to cut that off, that's the first thing they did to the slaves wow. when they got on the boat is they cut their hair. And I'm a psychology major, so I understand what that does to someone mentally. If you want to break them down, you want to strip them from their identity. You want them to feel that they have the sameness. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've like I don't even think if I had to cut my hair when I was younger I don't even think I would be who I am because wow. through that creativity and like doing different Playing styles with it. my hair I feel like I've been able to shape my identity so I feel like when you strip young Ghanaian girls mm -hmm. of that freedom as a young black girl mm -hmm. to grow their hair it's a problem mm -hmm. and it also creates this dimension of like if you come from a wealthy family you can go to a school that won't force you to do it yes but the schools the that force too. you to do it so then you have all this right and i Classism. asked the girls in my workshop i said so do you think that we, cutting your hair doesn't let you focus in school and one girl was like i don't agree i mm -hmm. just want to switch up my hair and i don't yeah. think it, i think i can still focus on school right trust me i've gotten a's my whole life mm -hmm. and granted i did go to school and act up when my hair was done but right. you can do both wow. <laughs> like you can still well i think this is a major issue in ghana here where it even goes deeper than that i had an interview with mama b yesterday mm -hmm. she's an american who moved to ghana with her daughter okay and he said right from the airport coming to wherever she was going the driver looked at her and she called her obroni obroni here I'm in so ghana tired of that. yes how and that's you know i gave this okay so i'm at the butterfly right. market if you know ghana it's mm -hmm. like twice a month it's where you want to go to get right. all the local things mm -hmm. and i give this guy my phone number because he's a vendor and i want him to make something specific for my brand and he saved my name as Megan White. Wow. W H T. And I'm just like. <laughs> and do you know what they, they said? He said? You have to take it as a compliment when they call you Obroni. No, I am not going to be. I'm not going to feel like it's a compliment right. to be put in the same category of savages yes. and barbarians who mm -hmm. have extracted so much mm -hmm. from ghana but want to come back and sell it to them mm -hmm. and want to come back and feel like they're saving them through jesus right. christ i think it's not crazy. a white jesus christ at that yeah so to end that <laughs> you know she said okay why do you think that would be a compliment to me and said oh because the whites are smarter they invented most of the technologies we are using they did this and did that and then she told me because we don't know who we are as black people it goes deeper and that's how we think no, absolutely, because, hey, so absolutely, so if you know that, if you're not taught mm -hmm. royalty, and that's why I like the idea of the Crown Workshop, is because I get to teach people the history of African grooming practices, and what that looked like before colonialism, and how mm -hmm. colonialism has influenced our perceptions of ourselves, our skin, all these things. Like in Ghana, there's so much skin whitening. Yeah, and bleaching that, creams everywhere. If you're not taught, like, about the ancient kingdoms right. and like what Black people have really contributed mm -hmm. to the world, I don't know what the um, what the quote is, but it's basically like if something about the lion and the oppressor, like. Mm -hmm. If you kill the lion, the oppressor, mm -hmm. like I don't know how to if, if the lion doesn't have its own story or something, something like that. But it's basically yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you are allowing story. white people with a specific agenda mm -hmm. to tell you about your history mm -hmm. when you really need to actually mm -hmm. go deeper because right. what's taught to you is mm -hmm. very specific and it I fits agree. their agenda, which allows you to be obedient. Mm -hmm. You know, so I agree. I didn't know this stuff either, though. I feel like I've had to learn myself because wow. I uh, used to feel like they used to be like, oh, like you're not like other black girls. Like, you know what I mean? Like, of course, everybody goes through go going. I always thought like going to the best schools, the white schools was the greatest thing that could happen to me. And I feel like, yes, you learn, you get very, very smart. But I think that if you don't know what it feels like to be with black excellence you start to think that it doesn't exist and yes. I feel like I've always used to tell people I went to the greatest schools in the country but none of them taught me to love myself and right. when you are in these white wow. spaces and glorifying whiteness you yeah you wow. can't love yourself and wow. think that you're lesser than another race. Like, you have to get to a point where you start to realize we are all human. No one right. is 
better than another person. Exactly, exactly. So if you are watching and you are inspired by what she's doing on the continent and you are interested even in helping and supporting, you know, to make sure she really succeed in doing this, she's going to share with you how you can support and help the whole process and, you know, to make an impact on the continent. So yeah, Megan, tell yeah. us how we can support. Yeah, so I have three ways. So I have a Patreon. So mm -hmm. if you go to patreon.com slash the crown workshop you can actually support a, support the movement you can uh, sponsor a workshop and you can join my uh, virtual experiences around natural hair uh, number two so mm -hmm. I've partnered with women in Ghana and okay. we'll be selling the silk scrunchies mm -hmm. and silk scarves like this and Every purchase is actually going to support what I'm doing with the wow. Crown Workshop. So you'll have a scrunchie set, lots of different colors, mm -hmm. and um, how much is one? Yeah, uh, I haven't really fully priced okay. it yet because mm -hmm. we're still figuring out production. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can support via the Patreon, mm -hmm. the scrunchies, and what I love is if you ever come to Ghana and I'm here and you want to be a part of an experience I love for people to actually experience the workshop so you can go on YouTube and see some of the videos as well so wow. Yeah. Wow. so I would leave the uh, link to all the patron website in the description box go down in the description click it and then you know you know what to do send her a message and then we take it from there one more time thank you so much yeah, and then i like you. your bag can we show it to the viewers sure if someone wants to buy this it's beautiful isn't it yeah so this bag is by a company called alafia so mm. if you go to alafia.com all of these mm -hmm. bags are made by women in the north wow. and they do a lot of social enterprising and mm. supporting women and families all wow. throughout west africa so wow. you should definitely support alafia this is leather, leather right yes Wow. It's beautiful. So, Megan, I saw you travel to the north, you know, yeah. of Ghana. It's so hot out there. <laughs> Tell us what you, you went there to do. It's hot. <laughs> um, but when I moved to Ghana, I was working with a nonprofit who was focused on the health mm -hmm. and wellness of black women. And I feel like when you come to a place like Ghana that's new, you want to listen. You want to understand what the needs of the woman are before mm -hmm. you start to decide sometimes people come here and they have this idea on what they need to teach Africans but I think what we need to do is we need to listen to women and let them tell us what they need so wow. I did a focus group um, in the north we um, f I flew to Timali and then we drove about three to four hours up to Nyak Pindori not too far from Bogotanga and um, the bags are made in Bogotanga wow. but um, I interviewed about, we had a focus group with over 300 female farmers and what I wanted to understand was their health and wellness concerns and the four questions I asked women were, do you think women in your community live long and happy lives, why and why not? Um, my next question was, um, what's your typical day, what are your responsibilities, what are, the, what are your health and wellness? Um, concerns and what sort of programs and initiatives would you like to see in your area it was just myself and my translator but I feel like when God takes you to foreign lands like yeah you can mm -hmm. do all the touristy things here but I think it's really critical for you to listen mm -hmm. and understand how you can add value so that was one of my favorite things I've done in mm -hmm. Ghana and I think that despite the challenges like in that moment everything that I went through was worthwhile because I think God uses the difficult moments of your life and there's lots of lessons um, and blessings as a result of the lessons you know so wow. yeah I feel like it was one of those moments where I was like okay God yeah. I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, but when you are traveling a path, you, you might not know what's mm -hmm. next, and those moments give you mm -hmm. a lot of reassurance mm -hmm. to keep going. Mm -hmm. I felt very grateful that I get to do this in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I'm doing work around hair, but I really want women to be well. And my background is diversity, um, communication, inclusion. I've been doing research for mm -hmm. a long time, worked in the aerospace industry, and I've done... I always like to make impact, right. and this is like one of the ways I decided to do it yeah. in Ghana, and I'm excited to continue that project, so yeah. stay tuned, stay some tuned. more things coming in the north. So if you're given the chance to change one thing, 
about Ghana that you don't like? Oh yeah, I got it. What okay. would it be? I'm not finna leave here until these girls can grow their hair out and then they can actually feel equipped to, to care for it because that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And I think that something little, people think it's small, but when you give someone that freedom and like it just empowers you. So I would love to see the little girls not be forced and stripped of their identity so mm -hmm. early on. Wow, that's It doesn't beautiful. serve us now. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for talking to me. Before I let you go, give some advice to the people watching you from the US, UK, from the diaspora in general. Some advice, even for Africans who are so obsessed, you know, with America and the West and trying to leave the continent for greener pastures. Advise them. I think that you've been taught that, you know, you have to go elsewhere um, to have a, like, a better life. You know what I mean? And I feel like even if you do leave and you get the education, extract the education from the U.S. and Europe. But then you come back and you lift where you stand. You like, and that's something I'm even realizing myself. You know, I feel like, yes, it serves you to have different experiences, but sometimes you can be so focused on someone else's grass that you don't even realize that their cousin is still in your grass wow. and still in your resources, <laughs> you know? So I think that I, even in Cape Town, like I was living in Cape Town, they were like, oh, like I want to go to the U.S. And I'm like, there's so much opportunity mm -hmm. in business in Cape Town as well. And mm -hmm. I think that you just have to get that experience so you can have the confidence to come back and feel like you deserve it right. because I think if you grow up with a lot of resources and I mean if you grow up without a lot of resources and this is something I still struggle with myself you start to feel like you're unworthy because you mm -hmm. know where you come from if mm -hmm. you come from wherever but you have to start to put yourself like you need to look at someone you want to be mm -hmm. and don't feel like that's not you feel like it's not you yet mm -hmm. and when you operate with that energy then you start to attract better into your life and then you get the courage to have the conversation with someone who you might not be on their level but you can build a friendship that can actually really bring you to a new level or introduce you to someone new so i would say you need to focus on networking when i came to south africa in 2018 I did not care about my YouTube channel right. because I wanted to make good relationships. Mm -hmm. I wanted to meet people. I wanted to live there. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like focus on building good relationships. Mm -hmm. Figure out if there's something you want to do. Figure out how you can add value. And right. you don't always need to be paid. Mm -hmm. Everything I've done has been very free wow. a lot of times. But wow. it's led me to the right people, mm -hmm. to the right um, connections. Mm -hmm that have ultimately served what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. network, add value to people. Um, you don't always have to be paid for it. And do your research. Realize how many people are coming to Africa mm -hmm. and extracting. And realize how can you build a business or just build small or educate yourself enough that you can actually start to either add value in what someone else is building to get the experience so mm -hmm. you can later build on your own. Wow. And yeah, you can depend on some people. It's yeah. not something you have to do on an island. So mm -hmm. like understand that if you are doing what God wants you to do, the right people and situations will align themselves with mm -hmm. you. I don't even wow. know how this is still working sometimes. <laughs> it's so challenging, but I know that like, God has God me in the you, palm yeah. of his hands. So God, so, that's a very powerful yeah. advice. And thank you so much for, you know, giving this free advice, okay? Now, someone is watching, young African girl, can't go out without a, um, um, how do you call it, wig. Okay. Can't step out. Confidence low. If that person is watching us right now and is touched with what you're doing on the continent for women, what would you tell to that person? Um, number one, I would like for you to actually um, send me a DM because I think I used to be the same way. Like I made myself this wig, like I basically dyed my hair, then it got really damaged. And 
I felt like when I put on the wig, ooh, <laughs> and you know, and when the wig came off, I felt like my confidence went with it. Right. And we live in a world where everyone is like putting filters on their face mm -hmm. and they don't like their real face. They only right. like their Snapchat face. Mm -hmm. And at some point you have to really pour love and energy into your real hair the same way you do the wig. And I can teach you how to do that. Wow. So share share with us your your crown workshop. Yes. And those and yeah, all yeah, the social yeah. media. So you can follow at Crown Workshop or at Motivate Vibe Grow. Um, but yeah, you should send me a message because I have upcoming virtual experiences where we can discuss eating for your crown and I also do like one-on-one -on -one natural hair coaching mm -hmm. and it's not so much about knowing what to put on your hair it's more so like understanding how to do that and how to love on yourself and re-examine your relationship with yourself so wow. thank you guys thank you so much for talking to me <laughs> and uh, yes she is Megan and she's doing great on the continent wonderful women are moving back to the continent and is doing great and helping you know make an impact here if you are that friend and you're watching this video right now we invite you to visit ghana you know come give it a try visit see if you can make an impact here let's all grow africa together it's home and then if the black you know continent is powerful we will be respected everywhere so it's upon us thank you so much for watching my name is hayford and yeah, like the video, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more amazing <laughs> content coming your way. And then, yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. See you later.